The next person to come into the room, Jim, was MJF. But the first thing he did, apparently, was reply to this tweet here. I have a tweet here that was sent on October 1st by Brian Alvarez. <clears throat> Max wins the handicap match, a gimmick from start to finish, but the fans ate it up, particularly when he hit the big body slam hold prior to the finish. So again, I'm reading that just to give you some context going into MJF here. Let's go well, and, and I was about to say that's pretty much a brief description of what happened. Let's go to this. And as I said, we were off to a great start, and it started with an amazing tag team title defense from a great champion. Here he is. Jewish Ultimo Dragon. Hold on. Yeah. Way too many belts. <laughs> oh. Jewish Ultimo Dragon. <laughs> okay. That's what I'm doing with them. That's cool. Okay. Um, right off the whip, I just wanted to say something very quick, very quickly. Um, let's have a conversation. Uh, you said that the match was incredible, but it was a gimmick match. And I would like to, no, no, no. I didn't tell you to speak, uh, very quickly. <laughs> here's what I'm going to say. I feel professional wrestling for an incredibly long time went South. In my opinion, I think people decided that they needed to absolutely murder themselves or their opponents, not even considering trying to get a win. All they were considering was trying to get a cheap pop or a cheap reaction. Uh, what I am trying to do is bring back a flavor of ice cream that I love and dare I say is just as much professional wrestling as most certainly is not a gimmick. And that is to make people so emotionally invested in the person that is inside the squared circle that if they hit a body slam or a headlock takeover or a kangaroo kick, it gets just as loud of a reaction as Darby Allen getting thrown onto the steel stairs, which was the most insane thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I am not faulting you. You're a good man, Charlie Brown. All I am simply saying is nothing I do is a gimmick. Um, I believe that professional wrestling in all shapes and sizes is important and it's all different flavors of ice cream. But I also believe to me, from my two cents, if you can do what I do and get that reaction, I think it's much harder actually than doing a triple indie, whatever the fuck. Obviously they're gonna clap, it's insane. Uh, can you make them absolutely freak out and have a damn near panic attack? when you do little to nothing. To me, that is professional wrestling. And everybody's thoughts on what pro wrestling is, is different. And I am really, 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 really proud of all the flavors of ice cream that we showed on tonight's card. I think this- well, Let me stop it there for a second, yeah. cause he hit some big points there. Well, and let me jump in. And apparently this is the, I don't know the, the reason why the generations can't speak. Because apparently Alvarez was saying it was a gimmick from start to finish, like that was a bad thing. And MJF feels the need to defend what he did. No, I said that was a pretty much a brief description of what it was because it was, and I would have said the same thing, and that's a good thing. If I'd have said that, it would have been comp, which I did. It was complimenting it. I hated the booking that Tony's such a fucking imbecile that he puts the most talented guy on the roster and his world heavyweight champion in a goddamn situation where he has to have a handicap match with two job guys for a fucking secondary tag team title belt. And the whole reason why they've got those belts is that it was working with him and Adam Cole, and now Cole has crippled himself again. But MJF is the only smart motherfucker on the roster because he worked a match telling the people what they wanted to see and then making them want to see it and then giving it to them. That is wrestling. MJF's exactly right. The fact that it wasn't two main event guys and it wasn't a match that drew any fucking money whatsoever is not MJF's fault. It's Tony's fault. But that's the weirdness that, that MJF feels the need that he has to apologize for having Really, the only match on the show that did exactly what it was supposed to fucking do. And that Alvarez thinks that it being a gimmick match was bad. Ugh. You know, it all goes back to what is pro wrestling when you're a kid and you're first told by someone on the schoolyard or your dad or whatever that it's fake. You're led to believe that they work together and don't hurt each other, but they get injuries in what they're doing. 
Now they hurt each other. Yes. Now they hurt each other. And the comparison he brought up, he didn't even bring up like a Young Bucks flipping or Ray Phoenix flopping, whatever it may be. Darby getting thrown onto those stairs, which looked brutal. Yeah, because it was. And again, MJF got the people to go crazy for a body slam. And the kangaroo kick is stupid as I think it is. And I don't like it. And I wish he didn't do it. The fans are popping for it. He's doing, he looks like he's in good shape here at this press scrum. <laughs> Barely any sweat on him. Everyone else is coming out there beat up. It's because people are into him and not just waiting to see him do a goddamn cool move. This is quite possibly one of, if not the best pay-per-views we've ever done. And what's absolutely insane is, first of all, beyond proud that I get to say that I'm the AEW world champion, there's no grandest prize in the sport. But to be able to say that and be the top dog when this roster is, quite frankly, an embarrassment of riches, is insane. Um, it is He's using insane too much. That's like five times. Yeah, well, and also now we've switched over into, apparently I need to keep Tony Khan happy because I'm sitting pretty good right now, and uh, I'm not going to do anything to piss him off. Was well, he also speaking the way the babyface world champion should be speaking next to the boss? <sighs> Yeah, I guess, but at the same point, he's hurting his credibility when he blames, oh, this is one of the greatest pay-per-views ever, and we've got so much talent. You got a lot of guys, ain't a lot of talent. He said an embarrassment of riches. Should he have stopped that embarrassment? That's what I was going to say, but it was, the line was so obvious, I figured I, I won't even go there. It's, it was absolutely insane, the amount of just in... Listen, uh, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I'm a company guy, but what I will say is I'm, I'm a pro wrestler um, and I care about pro wrestling uh, and I'm definitely pro wrestlers first kind of guy. And I feel like AEW as a locker room has never been healthier, never been better, never been more talented, never been more driven and never been more hungry. And like I said, I'm proud to be a leader of that. That's awesome. All right, we'll stop, awesome. with, we'll stop with awesome. Tony's endorsement there of uh, what MJF had to say. We're going to move on from MJF because he's babyface MJF, so he's not cursing at the media anymore. I was about to say, this, it used to be the, the highlight of the thing, and now he's being nice, and it's not any fun. What do you think of him in the role, though, despite the fact that we miss him as the heel MJF, and we're not talking about the comedy segments or anything, just him talking straight like this, because it's a different way we've heard him speak publicly. What do you think? Well, it's kind of what he has to do now with the position he's been put in. And unfortunately, because of the the nature of AEW, he was always from the start going to, the fans were always going to turn him babyface eventually because he was the best promo and the most intriguing personality. And we talked about it a couple years ago when they were trying to force him to be a babyface way before it's time. You know, he he was natural because he was the best at what he did at that particular thing. Now, you know, I guess it's got to be that way, but we will... In, the problem is when a guy gets over, the only reason that MJF is over now as a, the top babyface is because he was the top heel. And as long as they have the same audience, which it doesn't look like that's going to change, then they will remember the heel MJF and he'll still stay over as a babyface. But if you were to get new fans now who had not seen any of the MJF heel stuff, they would wonder, and he wouldn't have as, as impactful, I don't think, a, 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 an impact on those people because his babyfaceness is based on him being your, our scumbag now, rather than a scumbag. And the people are, well, why, he's the devil? Should we? It's confusing if you don't know the backstory. So I think for the next year or so, he'll be fine. And then by the time that, since they'll probably not get any new fans anyway because of their product. But if they do get new fans, by the time that people start murmuring about MJF, well, we don't really get why he's such a smart-ass babyface. He's going to be in the WWE making twice as much money anyway, and he'll be... 
a the goddamn biggest star there, and he'll be a heel. He will. He will definitely be a heel when he goes to the WWE. They're not insane or jealous, either one. Do you think MJF's being used well right now? Are you out of your mind? He's the world champion doing phony comedy videos and buddy comedies and defending a secondary tag team title in the opening match on a pay-per-view. Who's his money opponent? Punk left. Joe is apparently settled. Jay White. Danielson's been done. Yeah, like I said, who's his money opponent? He's about to wrestle Jay White. Who's his money opponent? Who's the main event of the pay-per-view? How is the, the, the next hot program for the world title going to play out? Somebody needs to go ahead and fucking set fire to Adam Cole and get some heat with MJF so we can get something started. Because the, the thing is now, whatever they were going to do with the tag team, they can't do it now. And yes, it was over, but how over is it going to be if we continue to see MJF saying, don't worry, Adam, while he's sitting in a wheelchair, I'll make sure we have these belts in six or nine months when you're back from all these surgeries. It's over. Figure, refigure it. Shit happens. Get out of it. Unfortunately, I think that's in a lot of ways the story of MJF's career. A lot of things that seemed to be about to happen, shit changed real quick, like the stuff with Punk and All Out. You're about yeah. to work Punk and MJF. That all had to change, but we'll see what happens. Perhaps, Jim, watching this, listening to this, maybe you could watch this, but listen to an old MJF promo <laughs> or an old MJF media scrum appearance using your Raycon earbuds. What you're saying is you just want to listen to what you want to listen to rather than what we have to listen to in the course of our employment here. And that you, you need to set your own soundtrack. That's what you need to do. You need to listen to the things that you want to listen to when you want to listen to them. And the perfect way to do that, as you mentioned, is with the Raycon wireless earbuds. And did you know, Brian, that Raycon is celebrating an anniversary? They are six years old, and that's 42 years in human years. So in very the very short period of time of only six years, they've made a name for themselves in the premium audio space. You know where that space is, don't you, Brian? The that's premium? right in the premium audio space. No, I don't know. It's right in the holes in your ears. Oh. That's where the everyday earbuds are not just everyday, but they're special because they deliver high-quality audio and thoughtful features, like a 32-hour battery life and a perfect in-ear fit for all-day wear and lasting comfort at half the price of other premium audio brands. And yeah, again, let's say, for example, you're walking down the street and you're listening to your favorite tunes, but suddenly you see a bread truck bearing down on you. Well, you can hit the button because they got the awareness mode, so you can hear the horn right before you get run over. No, you're not going to get run over. Why, why are you walking in the middle of the road where there's well, a Well, I don't truck? know, but Raycon can't babysit you. If you're going to walk down the middle of a busy street, they can't do anything about it. Don't do that, ladies and gentlemen. Don't do that. Stay on the sidewalk or maybe the grass if there is no sidewalk, but... Yeah, go touch some grass. Awareness mode would help you in other situations that are not life-threatening. Well, people love to be aware of things. That's right. And, and these let's are say, for example, earbuds. yeah, if you're walking by, you know, down Wall Street, you punch the awareness mode, and suddenly you're aware of all the stock prices. Nope. It just, Again. It, it, you've got to be in the vicinity, though. You have to be a half a mile or less from things you want to be aware of. That doesn't exactly work, and you shouldn't expect it to work, ladies and gentlemen, whether you're on Wall Street or Main Street or whatever street it may be, maybe Gum Alley, but the Raycon What earbuds? about the Boulevard of Broken Dreams? Because so many people, have their lives are there littered in the gutter, but Raycon... Is that Hollywood Boulevard? On. Hollywood Boulevard, the yeah. Boulevard of Broken Dreams, Sunset Boulevard, even. Ah. Possibly, you never know, Blanket Baker Parkway. It could be anything. But Raycon, being six years old, well, they've outlasted all of that because of the quiet. As a matter of fact, they expanded their entire business with the introduction of Raycon Home. So you can buy a home from Raycon and Raycon Power Tech. They don't have homes. You can buy powerful tech from Raycon. 
No. And to thank everybody who's shown them support in the past six long, hard years, Raycon is right now offering 20% off everything on the site and select products up to 40% off. Can you remember, Brian, have we ever been able to get a deal for our listeners and viewers and cult members of 40% off? I don't think so. That's extraordinary. That's a large number. Would you like me to do some more math about it? No, I would not. All right. Well, in that case, then, folks, you do the math and decide that you got to save this money and go right now to buy Raycon. That's B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash J-C-E and use the code birthday to get 20 to 40 percent off site wide. Buy Raycon dot com slash J-C-E 20 to 40 percent off, depending on what you're getting. Use the code BIRTHDAY, because that's what they're having. Six years old. Well, they'll be smoking and drinking in no time over at Raycon. Well, Jim, I don't know how much awareness mode will work as we continue to go through this AEW media scrum. I don't know how much awareness or self-awareness there is from some people in that room. 